It's nearly Christmas, so let's talk about uh, the North Poles. Uh -huh. So the polling, polling coming out of the north of England recently is very interesting. So I want to chat about that a little bit. Now, on December the 1st, there was a poll done by the Chronicle, I think it was, of a thousand people in the northeast of England. And it found that if we had the referendum again, 73% would vote remain. OK, whatever, that's one small poll. We know you can't trust polls, so we retweet, retweeted it and said it was interesting, but, but nothing more. And then, of course, there was the, um, the poll done by uh, Sunderland Echo of some nearly 3,000 people that found in Sunderland 61% um, would vote Remain if they could now. Now, this is Sunderland, remember, that was the first big blowout of the night with 61% voting to leave, and that was much more than expected. So the Sunderland Echo ran a piece on, on their front page called EU Turn. Yeah. Uh, very good. Um, but this is really interesting. And when you, when you factor in um, the Sleaford by-elections, where this should have this should have uh, had a, a big drive towards UKIP, but in fact UKIP slipped 2.2 percent, and the Lib Dems gained, as did another you know progressive pro NHS person gain. Um, you begin to wonder if this whole narrative of you know up north they're all going to be pro UKIP and stealing it from Labour and so forth and so on. You wonder if that holds true now. The Sunderland thing really did surprise me because I thought people would be more set in their ways about this. And I thought that at some point we would get a turnaround in opinion because of the overt lies and obviously the economic damage coming along. But I would have thought that would have come, you know, end of January, beginning of February after you come through a long, nasty, dark winter with rising fuel prices, rising food prices. People have overspent over Christmas and the NHS has had, you know, some convulsions of falling apart, as no doubt it will over the next few months because it's in a terrible state. Um, so to see a turnaround at this stage is really quite interesting. And there are other polls indicating that the trade-off between controlling immigration and access to the single market is very fine, finely balanced, you know, uh, some have gone slightly one way, some slightly the other way. Um, and there was a poll done for Open Britain that found that out of the Leave voters, half only want to Brexit if there's no economic cost. But we know from the autumn statement that, you know, even if we were to get that 100 million per week extra for the NHS that was so earnestly promised in the last few days, we already know that Brexit borrowing is 250 million a week. Um, before this, this for the NHS kicks in in 2.5 years down the line when it's already too late and the NHS is broken. So everyone knows that that promise is swallowed. So, um, and, you, and you saw it clearly in the autumn statement when the government didn't commit to that um, and they did highlight how much we're going to have to borrow. So there is a turnaround in mood. And the interesting thing is, um, will it stay that way? Will it get more dramatic? Ah, here's another thing that I'd like to highlight. Remember that on December the 5th, the, the um, first day of the Supreme Court judgment, there was going to be a 100,000 strong march led by Nigel Farage on the Supreme Court to make the judges bow to the will of the people. And that got cancelled. And why? Now, they said because they thought that, uh, you know, Officially, they said, you know, BMP were thinking about joining in and the English Defence League as well. And they heard there were going to be some pro-Remain marches, so they didn't want to clash. That would be irresponsible. There weren't any pro-EU marches planned. We'd all said to each other, we need to tell everyone to stay the hell away because we don't want this to kick off. So I think what happened was that they just knew they couldn't make that 100,000. And furthermore, um, it was cancelled on the day, November 25th, that there was another pro-Brexit protest in front of Parliament. And that was meant to have drawn thousands, but only turned up, you know, 100 to 200 people who were predominantly older in age and 
So maybe the leave.eu lot thought, right, it just could be thugs and old people and a fraction of the numbers that we were expecting. So I think um, that there are some real indicators that the, that the big passion that we were indicated existed about leaving is actually kind of evaporating. But where does this leave us come March and triggering Article 50? And that's the really interesting thing, because if everything else stays approximately you know, the same as it is now, our MPs will, will go ahead and trigger it. I mean, why wouldn't they? There was an official referendum on it, so they've got to honour the will of the people, at least as it was back then, because that was official. Unless, clearly, the will of the people has changed and the will of the people is strong. And Nigel Farage says there should be no backsliding. But what about backsliding from the will of the people themselves? Because if there is one body that has the authority to override the will of the people surely it's it's the populace themselves when they have seen that they've been defrauded or, or that brexit isn't as bright and glorious as was promised remember daniel hanan saying raise your eyes to distant opulent shores well that all looks a bit silly now doesn't it so the question is what happens at that point um and it could be that our parliamentarians decide to trigger it anyway um to see it through, in which case is Article 50 revocable? And if it is, then there will be a huge push for that over the next two years. But at what point would a government actually allow another vote on that or, 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 or let that take over? So there would be a lot of tension and a lot of anxiety and, and problems if that was the course of action. But similarly, if in March our parliamentarians decide to block the um, triggering of Article 50 outright, then even if it's a minority at that stage of Brexit, they're going to be pissed as hell too and they're going to claim that they was robbed and all of that. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, but I do know that we're coming up to some very interesting times and I'm quite sure that moods are changing already.